Oregon's rural and frontier communities face many health care challenges. It can be difficult to access specialty care without driving long distances. Healthcare professionals frequently feel isolated from their peers and burned out by large patient panels. Opioid use disorder, mental health challenges, diabetes, and other chronic conditions remain prevalent across Oregon. Enter Project ECHO a model developed in 2003 at the University of New Mexico. Project ECHO was built to use video conferencing technology to leverage scarce resources by connecting specialist healthcare experts with rural clinicians to create case-based learning communities. In 2014, faculty leaders from Oregon Health and Science University and Health Share of Oregon realized that Project ECHO's All Teach, All Learn principle could provide support for Oregon clinicians too. Echo sessions would give them a place to connect and to get feedback on their toughest cases. We want everyone to contribute, whether that's a participant or one of our specialists. And so through that, we are doing our best to create interactive sessions where participants are bringing their cases, that they are actively contributing and asking questions, bringing their recommendations, and that's mixed with the expertise of the faculty. It leads to a very rich discussion that has quite a different feel from a webinar or other type of um, more passive online learning. I think a lot of our participants may feel somewhat isolated in their sort of home environments, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, and, and some of that stigma and some of that resistance that our patients so often experience Providers can also feel pretty isolated, and so to, to have a space where they can come together, because our faculty works together, we really do have kind of a culture on the team that I think comes through in the cases and in the discussions. Um, and so to kind of be welcomed into that has been, um, I'm told, a really nice part of the ECHO. The ECHO model really is trying to shamelessly take advantage of adult models of learning um, to to push information as far as it can possibly go. So to take specialty knowledge and share it uh, with other people who can use it. Um, and that, 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 that's done most efficiently in this case by using a multi-site video conferencing platform that allows people from all over um, to connect in and to be a part of the conversation. We really are serious about this all teach, all learn. I'm learning from the people who attend, they're learning from me, they're learning from each other. Everybody's learning together as we do our best to try to help our patients have the best health possible. In general, uh, healthcare professionals are continuous students. Uh, always looking for ways to improve the way they can deliver care to patients and families, um, but also in general are inquisitive, curious uh, folks um, that want to do better. And so when they have an opportunity to do that, they like doing it. Those early ECHO programs at OHSU were successful, and as their popularity grew, Leadership from OHSU's Oregon Rural Practice-Based Research Network came together with the Oregon Health Authority to work on creating a statewide utility to support them. They believed a foundation of administrative management based on a subscription-based model would improve ECHO quality and quantity by allowing ECHO faculties to concentrate on program content and creation. In 2017, the Oregon ECHO Network was officially established supported by an advisory board made up of healthcare partners, payers, and institutions from around Oregon. We are able to offer ECHO programs at no cost. Participants get no cost CME credits, but it, more than that, they get access to specialists. They get to build their skills and knowledge in areas that they're interested in. And ultimately, they can take that practical knowledge back to their communities and their patients and be able to implement it in how they treat their patients. ECHO was originally developed to help isolated providers in rural communities um, feel more connected and be able to take uh, advantage of specialist expertise. And it turns out that in COVID, 
all of us became isolated providers, right? We stopped being able to go into the office as much, we weren't around colleagues as much, we weren't around uh, other, other peers as much, we just didn't have that stuff. And so what Echo does is it provides a community, it provides a regular check-in with folks every week, you get to see the same faces, you get to talk with the same folks, you get to be supported uh, in the work that you're doing, and uh, maybe, just maybe, it helps restore uh, a little bit of that sense of community uh, that draws us to healthcare. Today, more than 3,000 health professionals throughout Oregon have participated in ECHO programs on more than 20 different topics, ranging from diabetes management to gender-affirming care to tobacco cessation. The audience has grown beyond primary care to encompass hospitalists, skilled nursing facility staff, community health workers, and recovery peers. The reason why I actually sign up for one is because I truly want to get better at that aspect of care. And I like uh, specifically the echoes that expand my care. Um, so specifically for hepatitis C and gender affirming care, both of those, as well as the addiction medicine one expanded what I was able to provide for my patients so that they don't have to go to Portland or I don't have to constantly call consults. Um, and so those were, those are the areas of echo that I feel like have really drawn me in. There's been a lot of times where I've you know, I've heard a case on Echo, and then I see the case in Echo, you know, in, in my practice here. And, and that really gives a lot of feedback to say, hey, I've been around this, down this road before, and I feel confident about, you know, managing it. I would describe it as a, a community of experts uh, who have supported me through some of the hardest challenges uh, in my medical career. Um, and I think, you know, the real value in that is, is the community aspect, uh, because it's not just the information I need, but the support from, uh, people who also understand the work, uh, that has gotten me by.